Hey, Jonathan. Hey, Keith. What's going on today? Well, I thought we would talk about why Tableau has built relationships. Great question. Yeah. So they've been out for a while now, and not everybody's using them yet. Um, and even if you've been using Tableau for a while, you may be wondering why Tableau is doing this whole new thing. Right, because it is a whole big thing. Yeah, it's a, a huge new feature and uh, the reason for this podcast. So I thought I'd do a quick demo and use that as a way to talk about kind of why Tableau invested in this. Okay, great. I'm curious. Yeah, all right. So with that, on my screen here, I've got a kind of typical same old join um, kind of thing that we do. And I'll just talk about the data here. So we have two tables here. Um, and this is data based on data I work with a lot. That is case data. So it could be malaria cases or tuberculosis or even COVID or something like that, where we have data at We've got fit different facilities, A, B, C, D, um, and then different months and years that we have data for, and there's some number of cases for each month. And I made a simple little data set with just eight rows to kind of make it simple to explain the differences. And then I have a population data set, and the population is showing the facility and the year, and then the population for that year. So we have these data sets at two different grains. This data is at the grain of facility and year, and our case data is at the level of, level of facility and the month and the year, effectively. Um, and I wanna highlight here that in 2020, facility B has a population of 75 people. Um, so we'll be coming back to that later. So when I join these two data sets, in our logical table, I've joined them on year and facility. And here's our data here, and we can see in some cases we have population data, but not case data. Um, or down at the bottom here, we have some case data with no population data. So our data is sparse on both sides. Yep. So kind of a common situation in the data I work with where we have sparse data and data different grains and we're connecting them together. So having done this, um, now I'm going to take this data set that I've built out a few calculations that I'll show here. Let's say I have my facilities and my years and um, here's my population for each facility for each year. Just make these a little bigger and drag this a little taller so we can see it. Um, so here that population for 2020 for B is 150. Mm -hmm. All right, but a moment ago it was 75. Exactly, so we have two records in this data, both with a population of 75. And if I do the case data count measure, which is replacing our number of records measure, I can see, yeah, I've got these two records here and that population is 150. So that's like the, the classic problem with the static join is the duplication of the measures when you do a record level join to something that's at a deeper level of detail. Mm -hmm. oh. So so the thing that we have here is, let's say I want to do a, a ratio or rate-based measure. So let's say I want to do a, a ratio measure, like sum of cases divided by my sum of population times 100. I'll just drag out those cases onto measure values here just so we can see these. And then my, my cases per 100 wrong. And in this case, I'm seeing... 15 cases for 150 population, which is a cases per 100 wrong of 10. But we just looked, we know this should be 75. So this cases per 100 should actually be double what it is because it should be 15 cases divided by 75 population. Um, so with this, the, the kind of historical way we solve this is we write a level of detail expression. 
So a fixed level detail expression at the level of my facility and year, take the min of my population. And just kind of compensate compensate for the fact that, that the join produced this, um, aggreg this duplicated data. And now I go back with my fixed level of detail and unduplicate it. Correct. And then, which is a great thing that we can do that. Um, and we still need it even with relationships sometimes, but we're going to make that go away. So here's my cases per 100, right? So I'm using my LOD population now for this one, and I drag this in. And now I can see I'm seeing that value of 20 cases per 100 population. Right. And then the same for thing for, for facility C in year 2020 also has two records. And that one also is double um, mm -hmm. because because the... Uh, yep, doubling. Because we have... And ultimately, it's because we have two months worth of data mm -hmm. um, for this. That's why we have these two records. Right. But if there were three months, it would it would be triple the number of records. And, Even and more. And that whole scenario, mm -hmm. your data is super simple here, is worse and worse and worse the the... The larger the dimensionality of the two data sets, and the and the larger the difference in their granularity, um, you can really wind up creating these fixed level of detail expressions in all kinds of mental kung fu um, when the data is more complex. Exactly. So, so this was a whole piece of why Tableau built relationships is to make this easier to do. So to just demo relationships for this quickly, let me go look at my case data source. Actually, I'm gonna need a new worksheet for that. Let's look at the data source. So here's my data. We have two logical tables. Each of them just has the one physical table. So my case data logical table just has case data in it and so on. And I've related them on the same fields I was joining on previously, year and facility. And then when we look at the data source, the thing with relationships is they're deferring the joins between our logical tables until runtime. So Tableau is not going to try to do that whole join and cause the replication of records. It's showing me my case data logical table and my population data logical table. Now when I go to a new worksheet and I do my facility population, my year of population, and I drag out my population, there's my 75 for B. And so that's a smart aggregation. That is the um, relationship naturally aggregating that population count to the level of detail of the logical table that it came from and just doing it smartly so that you don't have to go in and make a fixed level of detail expression to do it yourself by hand. Yep. And to show this, in action, here's my population count measure. So we now have count measures for each of our logical tables. This count from my population data is all one, even though my case data count has the ones and the twos and so on. Mm -hmm. Right. And there's no longer a number of records for the entire data source. Um, instead, mm -hmm. I just have these counts per logical table. Yes. And then... I can drag out my cases and there's my different case counts. And then I have my cases per 100 measure that can be very simple ratio calculation, sum of cases divided by sum of population. And drag that out and there's that 20. And that's such an easier calculation to write. You know, I just don't have to think mm -hmm. about it. It's, it's the natural ratio in the way that I would normally um, kind of think about it in the natural language sentence. I don't have to kind of write a calculation that in a natural language sentence includes this fixed at a certain level thing, which which sends me mm -hmm. off um, into confusion yeah. land often. And this has been uh, a huge win for me in training people on using Tableau where we have this as a fairly common use case is they have two data sets. So we've got to teach them joins and relationships to some degree, but I don't have to teach them level of detail expressions now because it just works. So it's a, been a, a really great win for us. 
So so when kind of looking at this, why did Tableau do this? We use this one use case as a key demo of it is Tableau's mission is to help people see and understand data. And if you're having to figure out how to write a level of detail expression on your data, that's not really helping you out. So Tableau wanted to make this easier to do. Um, and with that, require less upfront data preparation. We didn't have to write an extra calculation on our data to be able to do this. Um, being able to handle missing data and data at different grains like we have here is huge. And not having to figure out, like, do I need an inner join or an outer join or a left join or a right join? Tableau's making this, making this happen. Um, and then one of the pieces with relationships is each logical table is independent of the other in building out our views. So we can work with my case data logical table, and then when I need to work with the rates, then I can add in my population data. I don't have to be working with them both simultaneously um, all the time. I can work with one or the other or both together in multiple ways. Yep. And so there's a lot of use cases that get enabled by that. Um, and then ultimately, one of the pieces with this as Tableau's goal is being able to support larger data sets in that we can have data sets that may have hundreds of millions of records that if we try to do a join would because of things like that duplication or replication of rows would just expand out to be absolutely massive and by the system would collapse yeah yeah and by doing the join at runtime or maybe we just need we're joining at the level of like month and facility or something so that join is only a few thousand records and we can do that at runtime so, um, and then the final piece with this honestly is um, other business intelligence tools had more data modeling capabilities built into them and Tableau did not. And Tableau needed to be able to demonstrate something, but when they did that, they didn't want to do kind of same old, same old, let's kind of traditional BI specify models. Let's go back to that mission of helping people see and understand data and make something that's really easy to work with. Yeah, kind of rethink the whole thing from the ground up. So so not just build a data modeling tool that looks like everybody else's, but um, bring some innovation to the scene. Exactly. So that's my take on why Tableau built relationships. Great. Awesome. Thanks. Well, I look forward in the future to exploring them further with you. Yeah, we'll definitely be doing that. Okay. See you soon. All right. Take care. Bye.